Hello. Hello. What's going on? Um. Well, I guess uh, I'm just calling in because. So I've been chasing a dream, trying to make music for like ten years, <laughs> and right. It's kind of getting embarrassing at this point, I guess. How old are you? Um, twenty-five. That's it. Um. Yeah. Well, do you know how old James that, Murphy like, was when he started LCD Sound System? Do you know how old Chuck Berry was when he had his first hit? They were both no. 10 years older than you. Oh, really? Yeah. LCD Sound System? <laughs> Literally the first LCD Sound pretty- System single is about being old and washed up and irrelevant. Losing my edge. But that's all I write about now. Because that's all that it, I just feel. Well, it worked for James old. Murphy, and now he's the front man of one of the most popular bands in the world. So maybe it'll work for you. True, true. Okay, look, look. What, what's, you, what's this? What's, ever, what's 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 this dream look like in your head? Like, if the dream came true, what would the dream look like? I guess just like being able to support myself and the people that I love to some degree with just being able to like play. And release music okay um what uh do do you actually get any enjoyment out of the process of just just recording and making music itself like could you see yourself happy just making music without necessarily you know doing it as as a profession or something oh yeah 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 i mean i would i'd probably be doing it even if i went to go do something else more like full time and put more time and energy into other stuff. I, I've always loved making stuff. It's the, <clears throat> and, and like playing stuff is a lot of fun, but okay. It could be, because here's the thing. I have friends of mine personally who, who, you know, be they friends or be they just people who I know, you know, through, through the industry who make music for a living. I mean, obviously there's no surprise that I know people who make music for a living doing what I do. But the thing is oftentimes, the act of making music once it's become their living is the thing that they find themselves doing the least because once it's be, once it's become your living you're worried about selling merch and landing shows and doing performances and label stuff and promotion stuff and PR stuff and uh, band chemistry and dynamics and you know uh, networking within the industry and press and so on and so forth and and then after all of that there only ends up being this tiny sliver of time with which you have to like write your next record in order to keep the lights on <laughs> in your house um, d- does that sound like a sexy damn. setup to you damn no no that doesn't sound great well I guess that's and that's guess why I'm calling it to like should I start redirecting my life to do something a little bit more you know because i'm also like embarrassed by like it feels like a really selfish pursuit like a very like masturbatory thing like as cool as it is and as fun as it is like the whole process of being like look at me and like this thing i'm doing is kind of it's kind of embarrassing to some degree um i don't Why? i don't just really like would you, would you be would, do you think it would be embarrassing if one of your friends was like you know, uh, maybe they had a nine to five, but on their off time, they were playing footsies here um, in their off time. They painted paintings and were like, hey, I made this great painting. Look at my painting. Would you be like, ew, that's cringe. Why are you spending all your time painting? No, no, I would I definitely wouldn't do that. Yeah, you're just making art for the fun of making art. There's no shame in doing that. There's no shame in showing it to other people. True. Very true. No, I, I don't think you should give up on your dream of making and enjoying making music. And, and I don't think you necessarily need to, like, you know, um, rule out the potential to be successful at it to some degree. But, you know, know, know this, like there's so much about making music as a profession that has yes yes it does have quite a bit to do with talent and it has quite a bit to do with whatever your ideas for a song are but it also has a lot to fucking do with like luck and marketability 
and whether or not what you're saying resonates with an audience of people, which like all have to do with factors that are so far outside of your control that in some cases, it doesn't matter how talented people are. Just some people don't get the right opportunity or they don't have the right message or for whatever reason, they don't find the audience of people who would actually connect with what they're doing. And that's just, you know, a roll of the dice in some instances, you know, or, or in other instances, sometimes it's about who you know, because there's some people who en enter the industry with connections, you know, uh, which, you know, nobody can help, you know, neither of us can help or fix or change. Um, you know, all you can really do is like, just plug away at what you enjoy doing. And if you find the time to do it in your spare time, maybe upload it to TikTok, maybe put it on YouTube, maybe throw it up there on the internet in some random place and just see if people take to it. Maybe put it up on Bandcamp, you know, maybe you'll sell a few hundred, you know, digital sales of a record that you're really proud of or something like that. Who the hell knows, you know? Um, uh, you know, the, the only people who I know who aren't kind of living that lifestyle that I explained to you earlier are people who have reached such high levels of success in the mainstream that it's, it's the chances of doing so are lower than winning the fucking lottery. You know what I mean? But I'll, I'll, I'll say this to end things off. 25 is not too fucking old to be making music. You know, honestly, like you're, you're at an age where you, you, you honestly are starting if, if you're actually, ex you know, putting yourself through ex various experiences in life, you actually probably have more to say than, uh, you know, someone much younger than you with less, you know, experience and less perspective on various things. That's a um, good point. You, pr you yeah. probably could put more into your art now at 25 than you could at 18. Could I, could I ask you one more thing real quick? I kind of forgot about it because I just kind of got nervous when I got on. Sure. But just in regard to like the whole idea of feeling selfish, I guess I'm like, that actually comes from more of a feeling of like, do you think it's okay to put a ton of time, a ton of energy and a ton of money into something when you could be putting more time and energy into like a job and like opportunities with a career and take care of like a significant other. And you know what I mean? Like that's like, I, I, I it's, it's saying, all, it's like, all about I, finding, it's all about finding balance at the end of the day. Like obviously, you know, we, we could have all sorts of discussions about the economic and capitalist and societal systems that we it, live under that make it very difficult to have any leisure time or time to ourselves and enjoy life and so on and so forth. But we won't, we'll table that for now. But like, obviously because of the life that we're living under, uh, you're expected to put a certain amount of time into just the basic necessities of paying your bills, taking care of yourself. Every, everybody's responsible for that. You're going to have to do that at some point. You can't run away from that forever. You know, so there are going to be a certain amount of responsibilities as you become an adult, more of an adult. You're just going to have to take on. Um, once you have reached a point in your life where all of that is taken care of, if you have free time left over to do things you enjoy, use that time that you have left over to suspend it however the fuck you want there's nothing inherently wrong with whatever is your free time beyond taking care of yourself paying your bills keeping a roof over your head uh, th whatever time you have left over there's nothing wrong with spending that time uh as long as you have no other responsibilities just indulging in things that you enjoy doing there's nothing wrong with that especially if they're things that aren't destructive to your personal well-being and health there's nothing wrong with you know if, if you told me that you like to spend all of your free time smoking crack you know, I would probably have a different recommendation for you here, but because you like to spend your free time creating art, that's a lot healthier and a lot better for you personally than any number of things that you could be filling your idle time with. Also, you're right going to die. So make the fucking songs <laughs> while you can, my friend. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel yeah, about uh, everything that Mr. Anthony Fantano has just told you? Um, I mean, this is such a surreal moment, but I feel pretty good. I was having a conversation with a friend who was like a music mentor of mine before I got on this call because I was talking to him about this, and it's kind of yeah. echoing the same stuff. Um, so it's just kind of, it's cool to hear it from somebody you look up to, I guess, from two people you look up to. Yeah, you should, uh, like, you know, give yourself some perspective. In the grander scheme of things, you're still pretty young. If you're too old to be doing what you're doing, you should give up. Like, what hope do I have? I'm pushing 40, and I'm reviewing <laughs> records that were produced by 18-year-olds. You know? Uh, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Word. Um, Thank you. Mike, real quick, I'm just curious. What kind of, what kind of music do you want to make? Is it dubstep? Um, I mean, <laughs> 
No, I, I mean, I've been I've been doing like just singer songwriter stuff for a long time. Okay, um, cool. It used to be acoustic guitar, and now it's like way more involved with like Ableton and like producing these long, complicated things. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. You know, also, um, you know, my uh, uh, you know, just just for like personal perspective, uh, my my stepdad's a musician. Yeah, and. He loves nothing more than just dicking around in the studio all day and just making random shit in Logic and random shit in Ableton. Yeah. He just uploads it to SoundCloud and he makes beats and plays guitar. And sometimes I listen to the stuff he makes. It's actually insane, despite mm. the fact, you know, it sounds like way out there, despite the fact that he doesn't know about any of the stuff going on in music today. Mm. And and he's a good guy. I wouldn't say he's a selfish guy or a bad guy or whatever. Right. He just likes to, it's just a hobby. It's just a fun thing that he likes to do. And some of it comes out really good. I mean, you know, uh, and sometimes he puts it out there. Sometimes he gets a few plays. Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, it's just something that he enjoys doing. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, under, I understand this idea of, I understand where the idea comes from of uh, feeling like you're, only serving yourself but then also there's you know we haven't even touched on the whole aspect of like you know if you create music and other people like it like you know you do a lot for them mm -hmm. in that sense sure that's true too and and i get sort of like the idea of like um you know wanting or having other responsibilities like maybe you want a partner maybe you want to have kids maybe you want to have whatever sure, as, yeah. as he was like referring to but you know, as I said, like uh, my stepdad is a guy who did all those things, right? You know, and he still made time for the and music. And he always made time for either playing or learning or practicing or you know, especially now in his older age, producing. So, you know, he's a guy who took on different stages and chapters in his life, and his passion for music never never left him. Just because you're doing new things and you're taking on new responsibilities doesn't mean that you have to sort of like throw everything that you ever cared about in the garbage. And you're like, okay, well, got to get a regular job and got to have a wife and kids. Better throw my love for music in the garbage. It doesn't have right. to be that way. That's that's silly. Right, right, right. It's a bit of an all or nothing kind of um, kind of a thought pattern. Right. You're, you're, you're giving yourself too black and white of uh, – a situation to exist in it's either i have to mm. live this normal boring totally vanilla like you know white collar life or i need to be like the successful music star who's doing mm. what they're doing full time there are some musicians who i know who you know uh, uh make a living off of what they do but then they also have a nine to five too you know that, that they're yeah, able to at least maybe take some time off of to either tour or record or whatever mm -hmm. you know there's lots of different ways to uh operate through this thing we call life and yeah. um you know th there's no one right way to to do it how you feeling mike true good i'm feeling good i'm feeling a lot better thank you so much is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go uh, i'd just like to say uh i love you melon thank you for giving no dream such a high rating and i love you lyle uh thank you guys so much this was great thank you thank hey you. much appreciated man and this stuff always makes me happy. I could really tell how much Mike appreciated you saying what you said to him. And it was nice. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, listen, it's. I picked Mike because I get fucking emails all the time. I'm sure you that have That have that same mm -hmm. kind of, you know, mm -hmm. like a concern. Mm -hmm. And I'm not advocating for just sort of like blind negligence of everything that you should be sort of handling and taking care of to but obsess over this think, one thing, you know, well, but there's, I, there's a way to balance it. It's funny. Cause I think, and I guess I'm not super keyed into like, we, we talked way back in the beginning of like this, you know, polarization or hostility that sure. you think is, is, is a thing of, as a result of being a critic, huh. but you're, you're not a dream crusher. You're the opposite. You're in, you're an inspire. You you are liking to inspire the artists. Oh, I sh I shit on records, but the thing is, like, I I always have it in my mind that like the next one could be better. Of course, yeah. Always optimistic. Like, I don't want I don't want anyone's career to be over because of a review that nobody I making a bad review means that. But I mean, but the, nobody making a bad nobody nobody making ten bad albums means that the next one's fucking doomed. Right. Exactly. I mean, maybe ten. Yeah. Maybe 10 I mean, at, 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 at the point where it's 10, maybe that person's musical style just isn't for you. You know, at the point sure. where it's 10 albums. Maybe it's um, not your vibe. And also there's this the whole aspect of it not being for you, you right. know. Um, 
I find that fascinating. Which is fair. I think I think it's valid to review things based on that perspective as long as you come at it from the perspective like this is just my opinion you know like you don't have to like it you don't have to agree with it but i want a full circle moment where tana and mike get together they form a duo right they make an album they get a light seven nice 